Welcome to Table for 92, element number 70, ytterbium. It's number 70 because it has exactly 70 protons within its nucleus. For ytterbium, we're once again cooking up some Swedish food because the Swedes absolutely killed it in the quest for new elements. But ytterbium is not found in foods and has no biological role in the human body like all the other lanthanide elements. But I wanted to cook up yet another wonderful recipe from the official Swedish government's website. I still can't get over that. It's like, hey, do you really want to know about this country, like try these recipes, it's great. So I've, yeah, I've cooked all the recipes mentioned on the Swedish government website, except for one. But Sweden deserves that love. They discovered more naturally occurring elements than any other country, other than the United Kingdom. And you know, Sweden didn't rule over like a quarter of the Earth's landmass when they did that. So even more impressive, I gotta say. Today it's toast skagen, a dish invented by Tore Retman, who did for food in Sweden, kind of what Julia Child did for food in the US, like really kind of brought it to the general public in a way that didn't exist before using television and radio and you know opening restaurants all over the place so yeah it's a cool little recipe So I have now cooked nearly everything mentioned on the Swedish government website, but this is the first, I wanna say like elevated Swedish cuisine. And you know, it's not that old. Like the Swedish meatball dates back to the early 1700s. Toskagen, that comes from the 1950s. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's a true expression of Swedish cuisine. And super fishy. So if you're not into that kind of thing, you know, maybe not. But anyway, first step, make toast, fancy toast. Cut a nice round piece out of, you know, nice white bread and butter it on both sides and fry it until golden brown. Iterbium is named after the famous town of Iterby, where seven elements were discovered in total over like a hundred year span. Iterbium is one of the lanthanide elements that group, you know, detached from the rest of the periodic table. It's numbers 57 to 71. And I've written all the shows from 57 to 69. So this will be the second to last show about the lanthanide elements, which I'm kind of looking forward to. I don't hate these elements, but I gotta tell you, like these are some complicated things. You know, they're also known as the rare earth elements and they're so important to my modern life, but the history of how they were discovered and how they were used in technology is a really crazy story. So here we go, ytterbium. First thing, ytterbium has just in the past couple decades actually found some uses in like modern technology. But for me, the most exciting part is that in near certainty, ytterbium is gonna be used in the next generation atomic clock. The clock with the most accurate reading of time we have. There have been atomic clocks around since like 1949, where the world atomic clock started in Boulder, Colorado, and where it still remains today. Check out time.gov, that website, time.gov, and they'll tell you exactly what time is and how long a second really is. So yeah, we rely on the atomic clock to measure the length of a second that all of our smart watches and phones and space agencies rely on and plus everybody else. Have you ever seen a clock that says quartz on it, the quartz clock? Yeah, well in those clocks, there is a quartz crystal that is hit with an electric current from the battery and that causes the crystal to vibrate 32,768 times per second. That's what a second is measured by. And that is how it keeps time. In nearly all quartz clocks, that's how it works. I mean, some are different, but nearly all of them work that way. In any case, they are very accurate. It will only be off like plus or minus 15 seconds per month if you just let it run. Well, atomic clocks work in the same way. It has a quartz crystal, but in this case, the quartz is set to 10 million times per second using a cerium isotope, cerium, 133. It's way more accurate. Like if you let that clock just run, it'd be off by only two nanoseconds per day or one second per 1.4 million years. So the newest ytterbium clocks that have been made in the past 15 years or so, they're even better. So they won't lose or gain a second in a couple billion years if you just let it run. Basically, the faster a clock ticks, the more accurate it becomes. This might seem trivial, but you know, if we ever want to travel to other solar systems, we are going to need clocks this accurate so we don't end up sending astronauts into oblivion. So on Earth, this ultra accurate time measurement system is used from everything from like the stock market to the Olympics, anything that you have like really close margins in. But you just think about the stock market for a second. There are billions of trades happening like every day. So you need to know whose trades came in first. It's very, very important to our modern economies. Wow.
wasn't that fascinating. The history of the lanthanide elements, very interesting, but frustrating. I mean, I love the concept of time and everything, but the history of the lanthanides is, is awesome. So it starts in 1787 in that famous village of Itterby on an island not far from the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, where a young army lieutenant named Carl Arrhenius, he just happened to be a bit of a rockhound, an amateur geologist. He found a weird black mineral that he sent off to the experts. After seven years, it ended up in the hands of the famous chemist Johann Gadolin, who quickly surmised there was some unknown stuff in the mineral. It was decided the mineral would be called iterbite, and the element inside of it would be called yttrium. It's not like Gadolin was able to extract pure yttrium, you know, it was 1794, the technology to separate the rare earth elements from their minerals just was not there yet. However, he could tell it was like anything else known in chemistry. So like he proved there is an element without actually like having a physical element in front of him. So all right, to confuse things even more though, in 1800, they decided to rename that mineral iterbite to gadolinite after gadolin. So, and that's what it's still called today. So other chemists agreed with gadolin that there was evidence for a new element. So this yttrium was established as a new element and it would be the first rare earth or lanthanide element to be discovered. However, they did not know this at the time. This was before even the periodic table had been put together. So, you know, these new discoveries like yttrium, they're considered new earths. Like they didn't have that concept of an element down yet. So yeah, remember how I said the uh, discovery of the uh, rare earth elements was confusing and frustrating? Yeah. So yeah, yttrium's found in 1794. Well, in 1843, like 50 years later, chemists are studying that yttrium and actually found it was a conglomerate. There's two other elements hiding in there that in that new earth, yttrium. So yttrium turned out to be three different elements, the aforementioned yttrium and the new elements, terbium and erbium, all named after itterby. So like really frustrating why they had to name them all almost the same word, just to confuse us, I think. Okay, next step for the toast skagen is boil 11 ounces in shrimp and cut them into small pieces. Mix that with one tablespoon mayo, one tablespoon Dijon mustard, and a few sprigs of dill. The Swedes, man, they love their dill. Fast forward to 1878. Mendeleev has already created his famous periodic table of elements. So chemists now knew there were spots on the periodic table that were yet to be filled in. There had been early attempts to lump elements into similar groups, but it wasn't until scientists were able to actually measure the atomic weight of the elements that they could truly see like the natural progression of the elements. We always hear about Dmitry Mendeleev creating or inventing the periodic table, but I say he discovered it. He didn't invent it. He discovered the organization itself. Okay, anyway, around the same time, we have another chemist. He's Swiss. His last name is Marignac, I think that's how you pronounce it. Marignac? Marignac. There we go. And he was uh, famous in chemistry circles at the time for his determination to produce the most accurate atomic weights of the elements, especially some of the newer rare earth elements that were getting found out. So working with what they thought was pure erbium, which again had been found hiding in yttrium, Marignac discovered that there was still some impurities and the pure erbium wasn't so pure after all. So Marignac isolated a new elements, later called ytterbium, from erbium in 1878 and measured its atomic weight at 172. Close, but we now know it's 173.055. But hey, you know, it was 1878. I think Marinac did a pretty good job. But get this, 40 years after Marinac isolated ytterbium from erbium, a bunch of Austrian, French, and American scientists found that there was something hiding in ytterbium at the same time, basically. Like, they independently discovered this, but it all happened about the same time. So maybe now you can see why the rare earth or lanthanide elements are kind of frustrating. I mean, you know, it's frustrating to me now. I can't imagine how frustrating it was in the 1800s, them trying to figure out all these chemical bonds and whatnot. Ytterbium, as well as most of the other rare earth elements, they're not actually that rare. The name really comes from the difficulty of extracting it. But in terms of abundance on earth, ytterbium is pretty common. It's more common than tin or uranium. So yeah, I mean, pretty common. And like all the other rare earth elements, ytterbium, it's a soft silver metal that is not found naturally on earth in a pure state. It's really difficult to get it into a pure state. Actually, it wasn't until 1953 that scientists figured out a way to extract and produce pure ytterbium, guaranteed not to have another element hiding inside of it. Yes, no, for sure. We know all the, the elements now. We got it. So 
This is the thing with the rare earth elements. Yeah, they were found in the late 1700s originally, and then through the 1800s, they were figuring them all out through their different weights, but no pure samples of them were really produced until much longer after they were originally discovered. So then, you know, on top of that, they had basically no uses like in technology for a long time. Yeah, in some cases, like over a century would go by from the time a rare earth element was discovered before people found any use for it. Like they were just curiosities. But yeah, so it's really during World War II that a lot of the research put into rare earths goes on because often rare earth elements are found in minerals attached to radioactive elements like thorium yeah and uranium well to make a proper nuke you need pure uranium so it was during the manhattan project oppenheimer and all his buddies they developed the technologies to extract rare earth elements more easily but even when you know other rare earth elements have been found to be useful in magnets or medical technologies ytterbium still isn't really all that coveted yet. At least not like some of the other rare earth elements are. Control over neodymium, praseodymium, scandium. That stuff has already been used as negotiation tactics between nations. It's that important. But yeah, like other than the atomic clock thing, ytterbium is not as important as it could be. But you know, that's going to probably change. Like that is the common thread among the rare earth elements. They were found hundreds of years ago, but only in the past couple decades have we really figured out what technologies they are any good in. So basically you top your fancy toast with your fancy shrimp and your fancy roe from a lake whitefish. I know it looks super fancy. The, all this together was like 20 bucks to make. So Sweden, so long and thanks for all the fish. And thank you for all the elements. That was super cool of you guys to discover all of them mostly on one island. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. See you next time.